So like what what rank is this? Uh it's silver silver gold. Silver goldish? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And do you normally uh play Phoenix or what what chance? Yeah. I usually play Phoenix. Okay, alright. Nice. And when you can't play Phoenix, do you have like a backup? Uh I can play I can play Omen, I can play Reyna. I see, okay. But you just like you prefer uh Phoenix? Just the yeah. entry. Okay. All right, yeah, I'm just trying to get a nice little feel for your play style. Um, okay, so I guess we'll start from the beginning. I guess uh, before we start, too, also, is there anything that you think um, you could probably use some work? Like, is there anything that you think could use the most improvement on? Like, maybe is it, like, your aim or your decision-making or um, clutching? Or is there anything that kind of stands out to you or you don't really know? Uh, I don't really know. Okay, okay. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I was just curious is all. Um, because I always know that's, like, the hardest part. Uh, for me, is, like, when I'm trying to get better and improve, um, sometimes you, you kind of hit, like, a wall, and I'm like, oh, I don't really know exactly what I did wrong, or, um, you know, where am I lacking? Where can I do better? So, sometimes it's good having, like, a second pair of eyes to kind of take a look and, and see what's going on. Okay. Um... Alright, so you do you usually just buy armor and uh, just run with a classic for the first round? Yeah, first round. Okay, okay. Um, so the only thing I would recommend, especially on Phoenix, I think the flashes are super important. Um, if you do do the armor, you know, armor, double flashes, right? Because you still have, um, you know, $400 uh, dollars left or whatever. Um, so you can definitely afford to buy two flashes, especially in the first round. You could... Even out of out of uh you know mid here, you can just throw some flashes right outside the window, just so you know maybe these guys won't get dinked right away or something like that, just to kind of get mid control. Um, especially for first round, it really just depends. Like some teams want to do, they want to go you know either C or they want to go A. Uh, looks like your team kind of just wanted to go mid this round, which is fine. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say like sometimes just having that little pop flash. And then your team can kind of peek just to get this kind of control. Then they have mid control. Then they can kind of have garage control a bit or work towards garage control. Um, so I think the the flashes for for Phoenix definitely is is huge. Um, so yeah, for first round, I'll try and uh, try and look to the buy the flashes whenever you can. I would say it's like one of his his better uh, abilities here. So you guys take the site. Yeah, the only the thing is with uh the thing is with taking B site specifically, it it can kind of go pretty bad just because if you guys don't get a pick or or any kills like uh early, they can kind of pinch you from both sides. You know what I mean? Like they can come from C or they can come from A and then without smokes or or a proper wall um so this would work if you guys um had a let's see here yeah if you guys had a sage this would work 100 percent um only because you guys can wall off one side and then you only have to worry about one when you're coming in you know what i mean um but and sometimes it's kind of hard to just tell your team hey guys you know we don't have a sage. Maybe we don't go mid uh, in Haven, or you know, we don't go B uh, in Haven. Um, but honestly, I, I've found better luck usually just either full out rushing A, and then if that doesn't work, like if you run into some utility or something, just fake it and run back to C. Um, but either one of these sites are usually good, in my opinion, for for first round. Just like a uh, like a thought in the back of your mind. I find B is like one of the harder sites to kind of execute properly. So you recommend to go to other site if you don't have Sage? Yeah, Amazing. yeah, yeah. I would say, I mean, even with Sage, it, it's pretty hard, especially into a Viper, because they can have, you know, her snake bites can stop you. Um, you know, you can run into even a raise nade like to throw in here, and it can just, as you saw, like it did, it did a ton of damage here to everybody. Like a, you got snake butted here, so you guys couldn't push into the A A link area or even back site. And now everyone's getting raised into this thing. Just did a ton of damage to everybody. Um so even to you, you see it did like 60 something, 63 damage, I think. Um 
Well, I guess, yeah, you only had regular armor, but, um, it's, it's just really, it's really difficult. Let me see here. Yeah, it's really hard to kind of say, like, what specifically what went wrong here, you know, but I think the idea behind it, it was just flawed from the start. It's just kind of hitting B um, on pistol, but a good rule of thumb, too, is if you guys do try and go for uh, B site, is to try and kind of push towards the back of the site. Like, if the sooner that you guys can get into the back of the site, the better. Um, just so you guys aren't all clumped in this in the starting area. Or if the like the idea, usually what I've seen people do is if they do go for the B play, they try and plant and then they all try and run away. And then they kind of plant for po they play for post plants. Um and uh but that's if they're running like Killjoy, Brim, and they have like lineups, mollies, all that stuff. So um it's really hard to say exactly what went wrong here in this pistol round, other than just one enemy remaining. Yeah, that's a good try. Yeah, I think for the most part, I wouldn't worry too much about um what like why you guys lost this round, but more so just the the biggest takeaway is to to buy flashes. Flashes there would have helped too, right? Like if you were coming in, um, let's say this is like a perfect time to throw a flash. You guys are all coming in. I would go over here to the left side, and then I would immediately just throw in like a, a pop flash this way, and then I would just run with it, and then try and push these guys here or or get into back site. Um, so anytime you can, I would try and abuse like your flashes. Your this is your best utility by far. You can get so much um, damage and kind of uh, space with flashes. It's a very good opener for uh, Phoenix. Um, yeah. Down, Molly was good though. I like the idea. Like you, you know, you were trying to kind of pull them off of uh, the A link area, and so they don't try and push their own smoke, which is good. I just think that maybe you guys, you and Viper, also go d down this way, um, try and kind of get better control here because I think towards the end here, you guys get pinched. A Viper dies. Oh, they were both A link, but. All right. Let's see you next round here. And yeah, if you have if you have any questions at all, let me know. And I don't mind just trying to answer any. Wait, what Asian do you main? Uh, so I main Reyna. I usually just play Reyna a lot. Um, but I I played Phoenix quite a bit actually, a little bit as well. Uh, so I'm kind of used to the entry. And second person in usually. I'm I, I really like going second end in, especially as Reyna, because I get to kind of trade and heal. Um but yeah, when when Reyna is picked or something, or um you know, if we need a smoke or something, I'll play Viper. But if if we need another dueler, I'll definitely play Phoenix. Alright, so second round. Oh, we need smoke here. Your mind Sova in. Okay, yeah. So these are these are good smokes. The only thing that I would say um, about this, okay, okay. Also, here's another thing. Um, for second round, especially if you guys lost first round, unless everyone's forcing up, I wouldn't I wouldn't force up. Um, let's see. So yeah, see so you bought a ghost, you bought light shields. Here, I would honestly probably just run the classic, um, especially as Phoenix. Maybe if I was Reyna, I could get away with like just the sheriff. Um, but the problem is here is if you buy, you know. Uh, light armor and ghost you're only going to be left with 3800 here I, I believe let's see yeah so you're left with 3800 for the next round and with 3800 the only thing that you can buy is you know your gun and then your sh your uh, heavy shields right so you're not going to have enough for another flash or you're probably going to use one this round and then you're not going to have two and i would prioritize always getting flashes because this thing is is very strong um second round you don't have to buy one but i would just full-on save here i think everyone else ends up saving so it'll just kind of make your next buy a uh, next round buy kind of kind of weird unless you maybe you get a kill here but for the most part i would just save um trying to keep the classic and um, these these smokes are good too i like the call out for these smokes because now you guys have an idea you know it's like we want to the goal here for pistol round especially after you just lost this first one you guys just want to explode into sight as quick as possible 
and do as much damage as you can, right? Like, you want to try and kill as many people as you can. And uh, if even if you do, like, a one-for-one -one trade is amazing on these uh, eco rounds because, you know, you have a pistol. You didn't buy anything. These guys are probably buying Spectre's head armor. Um, so if you can get these trades, that's that's insane. And bomb down. That's very good. Um, so that's the goal in, in eco rounds for sure. Um, I like just full on rushing something. Uh, we don't. You don't have to really um, do anything too crazy. Um, you can either go A. I like C. A or C is pretty is is okay. Uh, they don't really have any ways of kind of stopping you now. If if Cipher's here, then so if we know that Cipher plays C, but I'm pretty sure he played A um, from the first round. He came through A link, so I'm almost assuming that Cipher's going to be playing here. Uh, at least he didn't pistol. So I like the C call here. Um, we know that Cypher's probably not here, so they don't ha really have any means of kind of stopping us. I mean, Sova can kind of dart down here, but he can't really, like, halt our rush. You know, Cypher with cages, tripwires, that's annoying, you know? it You don't want to ever rush a site with Cypher on it, just because of that specific reason. Um, tripwires can just slow you down completely. Cages, it's very hard to kind of push through since he knows that you're pushing through. Um... But, you know, Sova, he just darts. He has the info. You're t they can rotate early, but you guys can already push in a site by the time they rotate. So what I usually do is, like, if they only really have one Sentinel, like Cypher or maybe a Killjoy, then I will just try and avoid that site when rushing. Like, if you ever plan on rushing as a team, um, it's a good rule of thumb to kind of avoid the Sentinels at all costs. Uh, unless, of course, you know, you can get some lurks off, you know, somewhere through the round or something, get a pick, and then you can kind of take sight. Um, but, like, it's just a good rule of thumb. If there's a Sentinel, find out where he's playing and avoid him when you're rushing. Um, so yeah. that's, like, a good little takeaway to, to see. Also, so, I see that you marked here for the smokes. These are, the, the idea is correct. You know, you want to wall, you want to you wanna smoke off CT, um, and you want to uh, wall off garage right because you don't want them being able to see through this these angles um the only thing is with these smokes if the smoke lands here and let's say the smoke lands here the only problem with this is you kind of give them a lot of room right you give them a lot of room to walk into the smoke or even um walk through the smoke right because they can kind of come out this way they can come out this way or even pop flash and then run through and then here, you know, they can come out this way, they can come out this way. So basically you want to avoid how many angles can they kill you from, um, especially when pushing through a smoke. So this smoke is way better if it lands like in the actual hallway, because the only possible way that they can come out of it is from the front. And then it limits the amount of angles that, you know, they can kind of challenge you from. Um, and that's just like always in this game, it's like the number one priority. The only thing that you want to do is limit the amount of angles that you have to be watching. So every time you peek a corner, like let's say you're peeking, you're peeking here, you know, you want to just look at every angle one at a time. Like, let's say I'm, I'm about to peek. Let's say you're about to peek here. Um, see long. You want to first peek the angle that they can see you from. This is the first angle that they'll see you from, which is on top of here and maybe back here. And then you kind of check here in the back of the site. And then you're going to check maybe close. So these are like the three angles that you you kind of check um, coming into a site. And kind of going off of this, it's the same concept with the smokes. Like you want to limit the amount of angles that they can come out of. This one, I would even put this even deeper, like somewhere here. So then the only way that is this way and then you can kind of just hold something like this and you'll see every angle that they can come out of um but let's let's just kind of see how this one plays out see like so this is the first angle that they can see you from then the second one is usually behind the site and then the third one would be like right here in front of the site Okay, so Sova's playing here, like we assumed, and uh, so he marked all of us. You guys should get that kill. It was a very good kill. All right, we know Raze is here as well. They're all coming here now. Okay, yeah, I like this call. I actually like this call. Um, so you ended, you guys ended up getting stopped by the Raze nade, and it was a good idea. You know, sometimes that does happen. 
you got the pick and then you want to fall off. Um, and I don't see this usually enough where people get a pick and then they kind of fall off from it. Um, but I do like the idea, you know, so you don't have to always commit. You got that kill and then you can fall off. Um, the only problem is if you guys are planning on rushing something, for example, you guys were planning on rushing C. Um, the problem here is you run into, okay, well now the enemy team knows you guys were rushing C, right? So if I was an A player, what would I do? I would be pushing here. You know, I would be pushing right over here. If I was mid, I'd probably get window or I'd push into grass. I would just get some form of control because I know we just got Sova to mark five people in, in B, you know, or in C, I'm sorry. So you know exactly where all of them are, and then these guys can kind of push. And you'll notice this happen um, with better players. They will always take any sort of um, information that they can get, especially if it's free. Like this, this is all free information. This is all free information because we knew that five were at C. Um, so now rotating back can get a little scary because you don't know where they could be if they get pushed up. So we'll see how this round plays out. Yeah. So, okay, this guy pushed up mid. He didn't, okay, so he had the right idea, right? He pushed down mid for the info, but the mistake that this jet did, that I also noticed that the Sova did, is you never want to wide swing into, you never want to take more uh, than one fight, ever. Like, as a rule, like, always in the case that you always just want to isolate 1v1s, you know? Um, if, for example, he was holding an angle, like, over here, and then the first person ran out, then, you know, he can, he can easily just kill the first person and then just dash out, you know? So he's always just taking these, like, 1v1s before he has to wide swing into five people. Um, and that was this Jet's mistake. So now you guys are up 5v3. Attackers really good. Spawned. Really good so far. So Viper decided to lurk. Uh, honestly, here, you guys just want to usually stick all together and then just kind of go as like a big giant death ball uh, and try and make as much impact as you can in this round. Okay, I like the heal. It's good. I like using the heal whenever you can. That's another kill. Okay, so... Yeah, here you guys just killed another flank, and now I would just run it all the way back to C. I wouldn't even like walk. I would just dart. Thirty seconds left. One shot. And it's mainly just knowing um, where everyone can be. It's always like you should always be thinking like where does who like where does Cipher play and where does Race play. So we knew from the start of the round Race was playing C, and then we also knew that Cipher was gonna have his trip sign uh, lined up in A. Um, so we can assume, because you saw the raise, CT, um, that A, or C should be clear now. I mean, they could have rotated by now, but they shouldn't be in sight at least. I'll sit here. Okay. Um, I like the C move, definitely. The only thing I would say here is probably plant for him. You know, you always want to plant for your teammate. You always want to work off of each other. And if you know that he's staying in, in garage, I would plant like right here. So then he can play off of the bomb. You know what I mean? Um, because if you plant here, he can't he can't really uh, challenge this unless he comes all the way out here from garage. And then he can kind of see this way. So this, it, it can kind of, uh, it can kind of hurt um, Omen's chances of, of defending the bomb. But... Left. Last player standing. Oh, nice try. Anyways, that was a very good round. Anyways, good. It was good. Uh, rotations, for the most part, worked out pretty well. I think one thing I would do here. Last player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we know that he's garage, and you have one flash, right? So. This is where I would throw the flash right around this corner. And then use this flash to kind of peek. And you could probably get this free kill. It's okay. Overall, good round though. I mean, you did a lot of damage. This was very good economic. Three people died, so.
three people are gonna have to rebuy here. They're not gonna be able to bonus you as effectively. I mean, they could probably drop pistols here, but it's still it's gonna be a huge uh, economic hit. So yeah, I noticed again. You know, you have four hundred uh, cash left. You want to hundred percent buy up. You know, your flash. Every time you have enough to buy your abilities, you should definitely use it. Even your your wall is good too. Your wall is actually pretty good. Um, if not, like worst case scenario for your wall, it could be used as a heal. And you know, being self sustained is very good, very useful. Okay, so you guys are going for garage control. Ooh. <laughs> That's just the lucky. Spike down, C. I have the spike. You guys just kind of walked in a blender of abilities. Should have healed there. Does he win this? Nice shot. I have my ult, I can ult. No one will remember that. Can we save this round? Or light by? Hmm, so here, everyone's money? Yeah, everyone's money kind of sucks here. Um, so this is a tough call. Uh, me personally, I would probably buy here. I like to buy here. Uh, you know, we have two alts, two, two, uh, duelist alts. And, uh, but I think, wait, how much did you start with? Let's see. Oh, 3,300. Right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think the play here, Phantom, Light Shields, and then you just hang on to your one flash. Uh, Spectre works too. Spectre, Heavy Shields, but then I would, yeah, you gotta look to, to buy your abilities a lot more. So that's like the main thing um, that I've noticed here. And I can, I can uh, write some notes, so. Um, buy slash use abilities more so this is like one of the things i've noticed and i could send you all of this afterwards so you know you have a good uh, idea of, like the main points yeah, that would be cool on. yeah 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 of course reina? i must endure so reina reina's full buying which is okay only and the only reason is because it's reina and then next round um she can she can always buy up and not have to worry about armor just because of overhealing. Reloading enemy spotted B. Blocking sight. Reloading. Reloading. Okay, I like this ult. This is good. It sets you up perfectly. Anytime you see a smoke like this, the first instinct after you just popped your ult, right here. You want to use your flash right here, right outside. This way, this way, and then push toward, or this way. You know, you either push towards C link or you push towards A link. This A link is smoked, so I would, I would definitely try and flash this way. Basically, in your ult, you want to maximize the amount of encounters that you can get into um you just you know obviously you want to see as many people as possible to try and kill as many people as possible um so yeah i would definitely go through c here i'd flash out um okay so now you have info we know that jet's still c link reloading Let's 
It's a good flash. One enemy nice. Going C, I'm going. This is though where this is another situation where if you had another flash, you know, you can might be able to re-aggress or you can fall off and try and hit somewhere else. So yeah, going back to uh the importance of your utility. 30 seconds left. So your teammates planting in C? Yeah. This is where you'd want Last to start lurking. Standing. But Yeah, I think I think the timing's a little off here. Cause he can just stick it here. That was a good try. So the, the, the timing with the lurk. So usually in, in, in a number situation, especially this, um, you guys have the numbers, right? This is a good another good fundamental um problem that I usually see um in lower ranks. Uh, is is when you have numbers like you have two versus one always uh so the best your best bet is to just stick with this guy you always just want to almost like hold his hand and follow him around because if this guy is fighting your jet you can easily just swing right after and then trade the jet it, it's basically you're just playing a numbers game you guys are trading off of each other um and that's like a really good fundamental thing to kind of practice like that's why when you if you ever hear people play numbers play numbers that's what that means um if you have a numbers advantage you guys just Go together, you guys probably both fall off, and then just kind of run C together. Uh, and you have a better, a statistically better chance to kind of win the round if you do that. 30 seconds left. So by doing this, you're kind of letting Jet alone. You're, you're giving um, their Jet two 1v1s and a, a way to kind of clutch the round. So as soon as... Okay, even though you did do this play, at this moment, I would say... The second he starts planting, like right now, I would already be moving. I would already be going up. Like, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the gun. I mean, the gun is nice. It's nice to have a vandal over a specter, but the timing is so uh, unfortunate that he could have stuck it and defused it. And now it's a 1v1, but it's, it's like the worst kind of 1v1 where you are playing for him. Like... He kind of dictates your pace. And when he diffused, like taps the bomb like that, it's like you have to kind of charge. You know, you have to go in. Otherwise, he's just going to stick it and defuse it. Um, and usually it wants to, you want to play the bomb the other way around. Like when you have the bomb planted, you kind of can peek and, you know, dictate whether he can stick it or not, not the other way around. Um, so, yeah, I guess to, what you can get out of that is just to kind of stick with your teammate. And kind of play around him a little bit more. Clutch. So I'll write that down too. Um, play, stick, stick to your teammates more. When you have numbers, advantage. Okay, so this is another buy, looks like. Reina's broke from the round before. <laughs> uh, and she cannot buy anything. No, no, she can. I guess she got dropped. Okay. So this is a healthy buy here. But again, you know, I see another another thing. You know, you have 600 left over. You, I, you haven't bought your, your wall all game. And I haven't seen you have two flashes yet, so... Utility, utility, utility. Very important. That was a good pick. Lose this. Looks like I'm saving. We should should they have saved there or not? Um good question, let's see. No, they should they should be going for this. 
Anytime there's like, even though it's like a 2v3, you you, you go for this. You don't Since save. It's, it's like a good gun round. Because this is how you should be thinking about it. It's like, why, you know, the only time you should be saving is if you think about it. Like, if I do save, what do I get next round? We get two guns, but they get to full buy, right? So they're going to have five. So now it's two guns versus five. And the chances of you guys winning that is very slim because chances are the rest of your team is probably going to end up saving. Um, whereas here it's two versus three. Um, so you definitely try and go for this. I would, the only time I'd probably save if it was like a two versus five. And that's only if I had the op and I noticed that nobody's peeking me. Like you just cannot, no one is taking any sort of gunfights whatsoever and you cannot get a pick. Then maybe you could save, but, uh, yeah, for the, for the most part, you, you always want to try and go for these. It's not a good save, I don't think. I got the spike. Yeah. Left. Cause it's just a wasted round that could have won could have been a one. Um Alright, let's see. Money here. Uh looks like Yeah. So everyone you guys are gonna be having to force up on a broken buy. Thank you. With two people having uh, guns. Which is alright. It's not the worst. Let's go. So yeah, again, yeah. And I think here you can you can get away with uh let's see. Yeah, you can you can go with Phantom Vandal and then Light Shields. I just think that the Phantom and the Vandal are just so much stronger than the Spectre could ever kind of give you. Unless you plan on doing like really close like fights, dropping. like I guess only for short if you're running. But even then, it's just Phantom, Phantom and the Vandal like are just better. Okay, good flash. I like it, you're getting kind of control. But this is another case where if I had another one, I'm flashing out of this wall. You know, I'm just, I'm just throwing it and I'm just full sending it. Um, or what you can do, because this wall is this Viper's wall? Yeah. They don't have a Viper. Okay. <clears throat> so this wall is very close. Um, but it's, you still get some room here. I, I, I can't, it's kind of hard to tell, but I think you, yeah, you have room. Yeah. So hundred percent. What I would do here, if I had another flash, I'd flash this corner right here. And then with that flash, I would walk up graffiti side. Um, so this guy would have been blind. He would have been so flashed and he wouldn't have known that you were here. Um, so now you're kind of stuck behind here. It was tripped anyway, looks like. But uh, it's something you could have killed after the, uh, the flash. Yeah, so it was just unfortunate where it's like a butterfly effect almost. Because you didn't flash, he was able to see where you were. This guy, right? So yeah, here, throw the flash around this corner, and then I could either cross this way and, and walk with my Viper and clear his side, or I could just walk up the left side. There's there's so many things. Personally, I think um, probably walking this way might be better, to just because you're going to be playing with your teammate a little bit more, because these guys are kind of lagging behind. Um, but the only thing that sucks now is like they know exactly where you're at. Um, so it's very easy for them to kind of peek on their own terms and kill you. Cover going out. Cover going out. Spike down A. Last player standing. Oh man. I respect the ult. Uh, I don't respect that. <laughs> yeah. It was a it was a good try, but yeah, I would not have picked up the off there. Okay. Okay, so this is another round where it's kind of a broken buy. 
but it can work, I guess. You see these a lot in comp or in uh, like unstructured ranked games and stuff, where people just kind of force up, you know? They don't really think too much about it, which is fine. Sometimes it works. Oh, that is <laughs> oh, very ambitious. I yeah. completely whiffed the spray. Yeah, I mean, that's what that happens, right? Like, spray, like, whipping, that's, like, something that, you know, it just happens, and it's, like, it's really, it's really easy to just be like, oh, okay, well, next time, just kill him. You know what I mean? But it's like, well, did I get, was I, like, doing the right things at the time, regardless of my aim? You know, that's the more important question. Here, it's just, your team really just should have killed this guy, luck where <laughs> That's the only thing, because this should have not happened. But, you know, it, rounds like these end up happening, um, where you necessarily didn't really do anything wrong, but you still end up losing, um, and it, like, it just kind of happens. Okay, so 3v3. Okay, 3v2, you guys got numbers now. So you number one enemy remaining. 3v1. Over by ceiling. Okay, so if you guys win this round, you guys should be winning this round for sure. But this is a very big round because you guys were on a very broken by. So this round, I would say, is almost unlosable because you have Reyna giving all the information for your jet here. Jet should have been walking up that whole time, but it, it's fine. It worked out. Cool. All right, so you guys are on the board. Good stuff. Yeah, let's bring it back. I need a drop. So yeah, your wall. You got two flashes now, though. It's good. But yeah, your wall. Wall, wall can be very useful. Um, so. Yeah, we haven't really talked too much about when you could use your wall. So, it's on attacking side, your wall can be used to kind of split up a, a site. Or even block, you know, it can be used as a heal uh, to kind of block them from giving any sort of vision on you. Um, I can, I usually use it sometimes to lurk out of things. Like, let's say we were, um, who knows, like, Shit. maybe we're, in, we're short right here. And they haven't peeked me whatsoever. I can throw a wall that curves this way around site, and then I can just kind of walk on the outside of it, or uh, vice versa, you know, I can throw a wall that cuts off this side, and then I can walk this way. Like, there's so many things that you can kind of do with your wall that um, it's mainly just to eliminate angles, right? Going back to what I was saying about how you always want to make sure you're taking 1v1s only and never more, you're eliminating angles, and the best way to stay consistent in this game is to make sure that you're not getting peaked by too many angles at once. Or you're not watching too many angles at once. I'll see if I can uh, notice it a bit more. And I can show you an example. There was a Soba here. Okay, so you guys know that a Soba's here. It's a good wall. See, this is this was uh this was a good use of it, just because you it gave you the ult orb, which now gives you your ult, you know? Um maybe I would use like in an ideal scenario here, you would use an omen smoke at the top of of uh see here just because it's free you know and it'll come back uh whereas your wall you know it's not but this still worked out just because your ult is very important basically farming your farming for your ult is is massive as phoenix because it can just open up sites it causes them to play retake um or you just get a bunch of free kills because of it there's so many things that your ult can really do So in this scenario, it's three versus four. You guys want to stay grouped and you just want to tell your team, hey, listen, 
I'm gonna ult somewhere, you know? Just group up. I'm ulting into C, you know? Like, I'm I'm ulting into garage. Um, and that's what I would do. So, Viper ended up getting this kill, which is fine. It's really good for you guys. However, if she died, you know, that could have been more like... Were you there to get ready to trade that? You know what I mean? Or, if you ulted, would he been able to trade your ult body? Um, so that's like the, I would say that's like the higher statistic play. And what I mean by like higher statistic is there's always a better percentage chance that you have to win a certain round. And I would say like you ulting into garage here was a higher, uh, percentage, uh, take. Okay. Perfect. So Viper ult, 3v3, very nice ult. There's like... One B, hmm. One garage. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. He got off through his wall or his ult. Unlucky, I think. Come on, let's go. Okay. I like the ult. I, I would just say flash right after that. So, ult and then flash and then peek. And you would have had two kills there. Or at least one. Okay. Flash is still good. Alright, 1v1. Or, Okay. You get a pick, we move. Yeah. Because the only thing is... He's now he's kind of expecting it. He knows where you ulted from, and then when you throw this flash after the ult. Come on, let's go. Yeah, this if you would have flashed here, this would have been two kills, hundred percent. But it's like now when you flash, he's gonna be kind of ready for that. He still got blind from it though. Did one twenty to him, which is fine. He got the trade kill. That's the that's the more important part in the round from it, which is good. Get a pick. We move in. All right. Need a drop. I need. Thank you. I got you, bro. Oh, he canceled it. <laughs> that would have been a very ambitious uh, ult there. Get out of my way. Also, I noticed that you don't really use your molly as much. You can use your molly, you know, if, if you don't need it for healing, it's very... Okay, so now you used it. It's very nice to use your molly to kind of block out, you know, a rusher or, or a rotation. Kind of like this one. This was a good molly, right? You blocked off kind of them pushing that smoke in A-Link. A-Link. So in this situation, this we know that this smoke is going to drop down. Always in, in post-plant situations or holding something with your team, we know that your omen is here, right? So if we know that your omen is here, he's going to be watching this way, this angle of them coming out. Now, if this smoke goes away, let's say they are right here, which is like right behind the smoke. and But this wall is here, you know what I mean? So this omen cannot see if he's behind this wall. You can, but he won't be able to trade that kill. So the problem with this is if you peek and this smoke drops and he's there, and he kills you, this omen won't be able to trade that kill. But, if you hide behind this wall, and omen's the first one to get the contact, then, as soon as he shoots his gun, that's when you peek. And then you get to kill this guy, if this guy kills your omen. And this is called trading trading kills, or playing off of each other. This is a very important thing that, honestly, not even, you know, I'm noticing not even immortal players are doing this effectively. So, this is something that this is a very big takeaway to to do um
and it's something that you'll start noticing more and more um when you know after a situation it's hard to kind of notice it in, in the in the middle of a round but um so like this if he's here this you see what i'm saying like this omen is not going to be able to to, to to trade this skill one enemy remaining but it, it looks like it works works out for this round but this is just like a good rule of thumb you know if you get in a situation like this again See, and this this is what I mean. So, Omen wasn't able to kill the Cypher now, um, because he wasn't holding that. Well, he ended up pushing the smoke and killing him anyway. But in this situation, he gave the Cypher... Um, I got your back. Well, you gave the Cypher two 1v1s you know, one one instead of a 1 versus 2. You know what I mean? I need a drip I I noticed that I do better on pistol rounds, but I, like I'm not sure why. On pistol rounds? Okay. Um, yeah. It could be that... Maybe... Hmm. Thank you. Some people are just better at pistol rounds. They're better kind of at... Um, the close combat shooting and moving. And aiming at people who are moving. I don't know. It, it really... Some people are just good. Some people are bad. I don't know the exact reason behind it. Um, but... I know some people who are very good at pistol round, and then in normal gun rounds, um, they're not that good. And I think actually the main reason for that is because pistol rounds usually are a lot quicker, and maybe they are used to that higher pace gameplay, maybe because of death matches or something. Um, but if you slow it down, that's when um, they're not as comfortable. I don't know, but I definitely have noticed this a thing. Evan. Cover going out. Huh. Okay, Cover going I like the flash. This kind of stops a rush. Oh, that's scary because Cypher's close. Or if he was heaven, he would have been able to kill you because of the trip, but. Honestly, though, I like this a little bit better. Um, the fact that you did use your flashes, even though I would I would say it's not like the most optimal uh, way to use your flashes, but you're at least using them. Um, and I would say like that's that's the most important part. You still have your wall here. Um, you still have your molly. So both of these you still have now. And, you know, we see that heaven is not smoked it's not anything you know so you 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 always have this angle that they can kind of kill you um so this is kind of always scary to deal with because when you peek this angle here you're always exposed from this angle and what i mean about like limiting angles you never want to hold for this spot maybe like i understand maybe peeking it a little bit for some information but to hold it's scary because if this guy peeks you you, you now you have to flick you know what i mean you have to just completely flick all the way up here and hope that you get the kill uh and then let's say you're you're gun battling this guy and now the ct guy peaks and now you're in a one versus two situation and you always want to avoid these kind of uh traps because this is a low i would say low um efficiency plays so yeah this is kind he peaked a bit late but this is kind of the idea behind it you were exposed from heaven you tried to peak ct and then he kind of punishes you for that exposure and that's that's the sole reason you ended up dying here. And in an ideal world, you're holding heaven, and he has a specter, and you win that gunfight because of that. Um, so that's something. I'll, I'll write that down. That's another good note. So um, limits limits the angles that you can get peaked from. Heaven. Reload. Let's see if you guys end up winning this. Four versus three. One enemy remaining. Yeah. Three versus one. Bomb's ticking. You guys won that. He's saving. Reloading. Another thing too is like, it's if you know you're gonna die, you're not in a good spot. Don't be afraid to just dump all of your, you know, you know, especially your your molly. It's free. You know, just throw it. <laughs> Throw it on the bomb. If you know, like, time is ticking, you have one HP, they're about to push you, 
throw it on the bomb. It's going to give your teammates more time to kind of work off of it. Roman TP'd into Cubby mid, I'm pretty sure. Blocking sight. Phoenix, can you go flash here? Let's see if there's someone there. Reloading. So this flash is because. Uh, you probably can't hear the sound, but Jet was like, oh, I think I heard someone in the cubby. That's why you flashed this, which is fine. It's good to clear that out. So this is a little bit scary now. Uh, we know that there's a lot of people behind here. Um, we heard Ray's, uh... Yeah, I would honestly just avoid B. I don't know. I I think I always I will always say this. I really I think B is just a death trap. There's one window. I just don't find B to be like Blinding. very efficient. Last player standing. Switch. Okay, last round. For you, hermanita. Enemy spotted C. All right, so you have your ult here. Yeah, this is, yeah, all right, good ult, good ult. CT, flash this. Or flash this. You always, like, try and peek with these flashes if you can. Did he run CT? Oh, he did, yeah. He just booked it. Your hearts are pounding. So one one quick little note here though. Uh I would try and make sure that you don't have the bomb. Um it's better, it's just the the spike is just better on someone like, you know, Viper or something. Throw it throw it to them. And you wanna just run straight into this cubby here. And you just want to pop your ult and run into sight. You want to be first person in, jump into this corner, pop your ult, run into sight. Um, however, like, here, you know, we, we saw Jake at the pick, which is good. But we see Viper entering. Which is okay, just because Jet ended up getting the pick and nobody else was in sight, but... For the most part. You want to be, like, first person in with your ult. One enemy remaining. And then your teammates can trade off of your ult. Or you get the kill, you know? Open up the site completely. Or you get situations like this, where they know that you ulted, and they're just gonna run. They're just gonna completely give up the site, which is good too, because it gets Viper into sight, and then she can kind of ult and do all of her stuff. Wait, in Immortal, do you encounter any types of toxicity or anything like that? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, all the time. Any any rank is gonna have toxic people, always. Um, the best thing to do, honestly, I know everyone always says it, but honestly, muting them or ignoring them is fine. Uh, and if, honestly, I would say, like, if you ever encounter someone who's kind of, like, hostile, annoying, or toxic, or just being just a jerk or something, if you can find a way to kind of ignore that and, you know, keep morale high, you would you will win a lot more games. Like, you will rank up a lot more games just by being, like, an overall more positive person and keeping everyone's kind of, uh, I guess just the like good vibes around, you know. Um, I've noticed it in my games. Like, if I'm like, you know, super understanding person, and if someone's like, "Oh, dude, my bad, I didn't know he can come that way" or something, I'm like, "Oh yeah, no worries, dude." And then it'll make them play better. It'll make the team play better, and no one's on edge, you know. Um, whereas like, if someone gets tilted and they start being toxic, sometimes they're just like, "You know what, GG, go next, I'm AFK," and then it's like, "Okay, you lose the game." <laughs> So, also to rank up too, it's it's like a mindset, and it's also your team's mindset, and and how they like kind of um, play Switching with sides. each other. Your hearts are pounding. But yeah, every rank is gonna have toxic people. It just happens. Or some people are gonna be 
See, what I notice usually in higher ranks, like people end up being toxic, but they'll still play the game. Um, whereas like lower ranks, they just actually AFK. Uh, but even at higher ranks, if they get tilted or they're toxic, they play slightly worse, you know, like where they could be playing maybe at their 100% if they're tilted uh, or frustrated. Now they're playing at like 60, 70 percent, and then that 60, 70 percent can kind of cost you a game if they lose their gunfight because of it. And, it. and it's like a snowballing effect. You lose that round because of it. And then now next round you have to save. And it's like it's smaller um, impact in higher rank, but it's still noticeable. So this is the pistol round. Nice. Long. Wait, long. where did I? I didn't think Jet would be long because, yeah, wait, I'm trying to find out how he even got there. He oh, could have okay. maybe walked, yeah, so this whole time he could have walked this entire time, yeah, so. Here, this rain, this Reina should be, should have at least peaked this just to see if anyone crossed. So he have that info for you. Um, I wouldn't really like, I don't really like doing it with a classic, but you can do it just for the information. Yeah, so here he saw you, you saw him. You win the gunfight. Thing is though, for here, after getting this kill... Because that they're because these guys are not in anywhere else, they're not in C or in B. We can only assume that they're either back here or they're coming here. Um, and after they know where you are, where you are, it's kind of just better to fall off from here. Take the pick and leave instead of kind of going this way. Um, it, it was just unfortunate also that Jet ended up pushing along there, but we knew for sure that they weren't in C yet and they weren't in B. So they're playing a little bit slow. The only time it's okay to push there is if you get that kill and you know they're all rushing into C. Then it's okay to push that. So now you're on the flank. Spike but planted. Here. Basically, it's it's not a good time to flank when they have nothing else to look at. Like if they're not in C, they're not in B. That means they're not. They don't have to like look into anything, and they just like oh they can they have time to process that you're flanking, and then they're just gonna be holding for you. So it's not the most ideal situation. Let's see if you guys end up winning this. Oh. <laughs> nope. We got it this time. Yeah, so here you have 1900, which is it's okay economically, but I just wouldn't buy um, so that's another thing. Um, on eco rounds, or after losing pistol, don't spy anything. And this just makes it so your next round, you're gonna have guns. You're gonna have money for all the utility you wanna buy. Also, in these eco rounds, you're gonna want to try and make as many plays as you can, just because like you have nothing really to lose. Like, try and take really cheeky, like close angle fights with a pistol or something. Maybe you can get like a weird kill or something. Spike planted. Because now it's like it's a two v two, but both of you guys have pistols. It's very, very hard to win this. I mean, if they're good, of course. I like the flash though. One enemy remaining. Nice. Last player standing. One v one. It's garage. I, think he's I know exactly where you are. I think he's on the left side of you. You can fire it off, bud. Careful now. Yeah. That's a nice try. Priorities, 
Yeah, instead of Spectre here, uh, I probably would have bought um, Vandal here. Vandal or Phantom. I just find it so much better. Because the amount of times I lose gunfights where I have a Spectre and someone else has a Vandal or uh, Phantom. I'll just dink them and then they kill me. It sucks. But if you do plan on playing these close angles, yeah, this is okay. I like this play with the Spectre. This is fun. This is the one time I actually think Spike having a Spectre is not the worst. But heavy shields too. You want to also always, almost always buy, whenever you do buy, buy heavy shields if you can. They're very, like 25 extra is very big. Oh boy. Spike down mid. One enemy remaining. 143. Even though Reyna peaked, I would have still flashed. I would have just said, hey, I'm flashing, I'm flashing, I'm flashing, like, and then just thrown it anyway. You just have so much value out of that flash right there. But it's, it's okay. You, they, the kill got traded. It's fun. That's, that's one of their best. Okay, 5v3. You guys have numbers here. When, whenever you guys, you're on defense and you have numbers, like you have five versus three, you always want to, you don't want to over push. You don't want to give them free picks, free kills. Um, because let's say this Viper died before killing that guy, right? Then it's a 2v4. And that's another pick. You know what I mean? So you just want to hold angles and play off of each other, and then they come into you, and then you have the number advantage. The only time it's good to kind of peek and take these duels is if you are down on numbers and you need to balance things out. But when you're up, it's always good to just hide. Make them beg. I need a drop. Omen coming with me. Cheers. Okay, looks like you're going mid this round. Too C long. Yeah, this is okay if you just want to peek for info. I would not challenge this after like the first two seconds of the round. I wouldn't even be peeking this. And the reason for this, this is going back to what I was saying about the angles, right? This is an angle. They can, Let's say they come from grass, right? Or they decide to swing this way. This is two angles, one and two, where they can both be peeking you from. So this is never a, a good place to kind of... So basically, you have to look at two angles, and when they're coming out, they're coming from this way, or coming from this way, they only have one angle to look at, and that's where you're at right now. I mean, you could be on top of the box in sight, but um, usually not, not the case, and they're not going to ever be clearing there unless it's like okay, jets really? known for playing b or something or rays or something how should it hold the angles um so if you're playing on b uh i would play it from like you could play it from back here you could play it from back here where you just have to hold it this way you know and when you're holding it just this way they can only peek you from one one angle um but that's also kind of sketchy too, because they can either be close to the door or they could be further back if you're holding this angle. So they're either over here or right at the door. And then if you're aiming at the head over here, it's going to be like the body over here. Um, so I don't like that angle either. I just don't, I don't like peeking this doorway. Like I, I refuse to kind of peek this doorway. I, I think personally, it's like, uh, you are at a disadvantage peeking that. Um, so I'll play when I play Reyna, I play the corners. I really like the corners because no one expects you to play the corners. I get a kill and then I just miss away. As Phoenix, you can probably you can play from A link and then watch the cross into sight. Um or C link watching the cross into sight. Uh because there's there's an angle where you can hold where you're not looking into the door, but you're looking to see if they walk up from the door. Maybe you get into that angle at one point and I can show you. Spike 
Spike planted. So they went A. Ah, uh, this is a little scary. They could be into CT here, depending on how. Yeah, okay, we got, we got we got a little lucky here. I like the ults. I like the flash. I flash again. One enemy remaining. So this was a good flash, actually. This is a very good flash. The only problem is, I think that it popped inside of the cage. So you want to throw another one, you know, just right away, boom, right right away, another flash. That this cipher would have been blind, and then maybe he wouldn't have made the play that he did. Uh, but it still didn't really work out for him. He died, but. Overall, I liked it. That was a good old, good old, good flash, good retake. Strike at their weak points. If one link breaks, the rest will follow. Okay, you're watching the cross now. I like doing this from time to time for info. Get out of my way. After that first, after that first person who jumps across, I would not repeat this. Uh, better players can punish you for that. Um, just because they know that you're at the angle, come around, pre-fire you, and then you're just dead. Um, okay. Uh, I don't really like the wall too much because this kind of helps them. Get out of my this kind of helps them run out. This is like a wall that I would throw if I was coming into the site. Because like, if you throw this wall, it's and they come out of short, they don't have to worry about looking right anymore because of this wall. So now the only thing that they have is they look at heaven, then they start clearing the left side and the back back of this site. But let's see what happens. I mean, you could technically be close, right? Actually, that wouldn't be a bad spot if you played there. But I like the molly. Okay, that was a good molly. It stops the rush. It's a good try. Don't. Why would you want that? Can't go there. I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Uh, how do you work your spray pattern? Uh, so that's something that you just have to go into, um, a shooting range and then just spray to wall. That's the best thing that you can do is, um, go into a wall and try and make the bullets like very clumped together and then keep backing up. So start off really close to the wall, like really close, um, spray at the wall. If you can get them all very close, very tight, back up, rinse and repeat. And then until it gets very close, very tight, back up, rinse and repeat. And then just keep aiming at the wall until you get your spray pattern down. Um, and then I would practice spray, um, spraying like bots individually. And then uh, you can take it into DMs and practice it in DMs. Uh, it's just, it comes through playing and a comfort comfortability thing though. The more you play, the better hang you get with it. So like with this spray that you did, it was good until, let's see here. So I like this spray. Careful now. But personally, I, I probably wouldn't spray in this situation. The problem is with spraying is it commits you. It immediately just commits you on the fight. And you will 100% like, if you if you commit here on this, someone's going to come. And you know they're rushing A, someone's going to come trade this. So I would say it's like, unless you're Reyna. Like, that's why I like Reyna, because you can commit to gunfights and then dismiss away. But with, with Phoenix, like... You have to be a little bit more careful. You see how he's already swinging as you were committing with this guy? You can have done, like, a burst with this guy. Um, but honestly, like, a one-for-one -one trade like this is not the end of the world. Um, but I, I personally, we know that he's coming A. We are in sight. I would hold, I would hold like, somewhere around this angle. After I molly this, I know now the only spot that they can come from is from long, right? And before peeking this, I would wait for them to get closer. I would wait for them to, to hear them running up. And then I would flash. I'd flash out. So the peak was okay, but I would definitely flash out first, get info, and then reassess the situation. But you want to always just look to flash. You want to use up all of your flashes always. Um, and then... Yeah, you get in a situation here where you get traded. And this is an okay trade because you got one at least. But if you had a flash, that would have been a free kill. Or if you waited for them to come up, maybe you got two kills, you know? So I would just say maybe focus more on utility. Why would you want that? 
Can't go there. Here. Okay, three v two, two v one. Seconds left. And he gets one. Cool. Okay, so we know that Omen ulted, and that this guy is kind of fighting like a lot of people see. This situation, you could have either pushed a long, but you had a guy who was already kind of pushed up short, so this is fine. I like this rotation. And you're looking for the Omen. Yeah, I'd be coming here. I'd just be letting my teammate know, you know, look CT. Or I guess he was canceled. Yeah, I think only canceled. Enemy spotted mid. Good flash. Exactly where you are. Okay, those. This, this was a good flash. You got the info. You you got that there was two there. You took a couple shots. You know you didn't get anything out of it, but that's fine. Now you leave. You, if repeaking this, it's like you know they know where you are. Even if you were to flash it, they they're gonna be expecting it. So yeah, I know you probably can't hear the video, but here you're hearing you're hearing them run in. They're they're already running in. This one another flash. You know? And then with this flash, Jet was blind, Raze was blind, free kills. Just try and think, like... Here, let me write this down here. Um, try to use flashes before every peak. Every aggressive peak. If you can. Spike down, B. Two v two. One enemy remaining. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so Rana just called it their A. Enemy spotted, a. You're rotating over. <sighs> Here, what you could do also, you could just jump peek. You can just jump from back sight just to peek. Um, I would only use the flash if I heard people, so you don't waste them, but... Um, shouldering is okay. It's just riskier than just jump peeking just to see if you see anything. One enemy remaining. Okay, five versus one. He's in garage, I think. Yeah, I would hold this. Yep. Yeah, uh, he's garage. Thirty seconds left. I don't see how he can win this round. I think he saves. Ten seconds. Where did he kill you from? A window. Ten. Yeah. Okay. It's about an off. Yeah, and this is this is going back to the to what I was saying about the angles. Here's a perfect example, you know. You were watching this, and then you tried to take a more uh, aggressive angle, but you're exposed by too many angles. Like you're exposed from this guy, and now this guy, and then 
it, it's like near impossible to win this. Because even would if it you be do, better if I held the angle to the left. Yeah, yeah. So that would have been okay. If yeah, holding this angle, this is a better play. Um, but going back to what I said, you know, it it's definitely a better because you can flick, you can flick down if you need to, uh, if they decide to peek you from lower. But I would even I would go a little bit more to the right, like. If you were more to the right, then the only angle you're watching is the one like them getting to the box. You know what I'm saying? Like jumping out of the window or coming out of grass. They're all coming this way, this angle. And if you're holding this with the op, this is like your best optimal play if you have to watch B with it. Um, Cause like, yeah, this, you, you have to flick down if they come to peek you, but. Okay, 3v3, 2v2, 1v2. Let's see how he plays this with an op retake. This sucks. I see him winning this. Cover going out. Very difficult. Yep. So Spectre here. Or Judge. Okay, if you do go with the Judge play, you heavy shields and then you play short. I wouldn't play here. Because here, if you do get exposed, you are swinging wide into um, them holding like long range duels. So every time you have a judge, you only want to take close encounter duels um, for obvious reasons. Like if you played short or something or garage maybe and just held garage the entire time. Here it is like a short range duel where you are long. But like let's say for some reason they decide to, um, I don't know, like omen flash you or... I mean, let's say they they found out that you were here. Like, you killed one, and now they know you're here. It's like, they they won't ever come close, you know? They're not going to ever come close to you. They're just going to hold this wide angle, and then if, you know, they can throw a molly at you, like if Phoenix threw a molly here, you just kind of die. Um, or you peek wide, and then they're holding here with vandals or something. Oh, you heard a guy. So you hear your guy right now. He just stepped up. And you just call him. You're like, I hear A. This is good though. You're in a good spot here now. This guy probably TP'd heaven. Not in our spawn. Or hell. I mean A, I think. You just hold this. Spike planted. Wait, did they go C? Fire in the hole! Oh, that was Omen that you heard and he teleported C. Wow. That sucks. <laughs> A little lucky. One enemy remaining. Last player standing. Okay, 1v1. So here you're going to be thinking. You know that Omen was the one who planted the bomb. And they had a lot of time. So, good flash just to get basic information. But now after looking at this plant. There's, it's very likely he went long. Very likely he went long. He could have planted when CT with the rays. But he would have been seen when he got the key, uh, kill traded. And I don't think he went long and then went to garage. So I would say like 80% of the time, they're going to be peeking from long here. Okay. Oh, so now we know that he's CT. Good flash. Yeah, it's unlucky. You didn't have time there. Actually, I'm curious where he actually went. How did he? How did this guy not calm that? One enemy remaining. Last player standing. <sighs> yeah, you got time. You got timing pretty hard, I guess. All good. <sighs> you know, in this situation, I think I would go for the half. But I don't, I don't actually think you have enough time, unless you stick it. This is just hard. Some some clutches are just mathematically so in, not in your favor that it's very difficult to win this round. But yeah, after seeing that flash from CT, I would have stuck it. It's your only play. I, I thought he was close. So that's why I tried to stop it earlier. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I would have thought the same thing, but it's one of those things that like it's like hindsight kind of thing, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, I think the play there was to stick it, but it's like you only knew to stick that after you peaked and saw that he was still way back there, you know what I mean? So it's really hard to kind of tell where he was from that flash. Um either way, if you did kill him there, you wouldn't have time to defuse the bomb. So I I think like it's it's literally like the only possible play that you can make is to stick that to win the round is to stick that. Need a drop. But sometimes it's like unwinnable. So you could either try to stick it and hope you win the round or try and kill him to so he loses more money. Oh. Wait. Need a drop. Thank you. Wait, wait, you bought the okay, so you bought the Reina. Thank you. Huh. Like uh, at this point I was just feeling very unconfident. That's... Oh, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, because you you thought that Reina would probably do better with the gun or like have more impact, I guess. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, sometimes it that that gets to you. But I wouldn't you know, whatever they say in chat or like whatever they're saying over comms, like just just ignore them sometimes like just be confident with your own play and then if you lose the game because of your own fault that's fine you know it's better to lose the game on your own terms than lose the game because reyna didn't get that two kills with the gun you know what i mean that she could have won like at the end of the day winning isn't i don't think winning should be the goal and instead it should just be like to getting to get better and to improve you know because if you improve eventually you're going to rank up and then you're going to get to the rank that you belong in if you play enough um but i i wouldn't i wouldn't let them i would just buy the gun for my own sake you know i i wouldn't um i'd be i'd be a little bit more selfish you know but i understand Sometimes like games like this are close. Uh, Unlucky, down. he was holding for you. C. And the uh, the only thing, the, so the reason why this didn't end up working for you in your favor was because Reyna pushed through A like four rounds in a row. I've noticed, um, and this is why this ended up betting you. Uh, yeah, unfortunate. Spike down. C. Yeah, we just like hard make sure you hard clear that corner. Let's see. Do you guys win this? 30 seconds. 2v2. They are standing. 1v2 with Reyna. Sounds like you guys have 20 seconds or uh, 15 seconds left. Huh. She should have definitely cleared this close angle. But then again, like, I wouldn't expect Jet with enough to be playing here. Just unlucky. Alright, so it goes into OT. Phoenix, just get one kill this round, and I'll be happy. Yeah, I can, I can hear these guys are being, uh, toxic. And it's like, don't, I wouldn't let these people like get to you. At the end of the day, you know, you guys are all still playing, you know, a video game and everyone's just trying to win. But the thing is like, they're all making mistakes too, but they just don't want to recognize it or see it. So that's one thing to always take into consideration. Like, even though someone's playing well, one game, they're probably making a ton of mistakes. They just don't really realize it and they're not punished for it. Because if they played against better players, the, the way that they're playing, they probably will end up getting punished a lot. And that's also another like consistency thing that I noticed kind of uh lower rank players kind of have is like they'll have some games where they get like 30 kills, 25 kills or something, and the next game they get like 10 or 5. Um, and it's more of like a consistency thing. But that's just because Sometimes they get lucky, you know, their plays have a, a certain luck to it that should not be working and it ends up working, but eventually you, you get punished for it. Yeah, I don't mind this angle. This isn't bad. Wall? Perfect. Good wall. 
So this was good. This was really good. You know, you're blocking off garage while your team's fighting CT. It's a really good play. And a molly. This was good. You play this well. Very well round. Even though, so, even though you're not getting kills, you're you're having a lot of impact right now. This just stalled, you know, however long the molly lasts. And then, same with the wall. Like, you just stalled so much time for your team to kind of reposition, get in better sp spots, and um, be able to fight this. So this, so Viper just died. You go to try and trade that. Perfect. Textbook. That's textbook trading. You see your teammate gun battling. You wide swing and get that kill. So, you're actually playing this around really well. Good job. It's good stuff. Need another kill, Eddie. So, yeah, I wouldn't re peek into this. Reyna did end up getting the kill. Actually, wait, the repeat was fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it was good. Um, because your Reyna was short. So because Reyna was short taking this fight, it's good to peek this. Because now they are the ones, like I was mentioning about the angles. They are the ones who have two angles that they have to watch now. Because they have this angle where you're coming in um, this way. And then this angle. So now they're in a bad spot. So that's pretty good. That's the only time I, I'd recommend repeating this. Spike down A. And now you have spike down. Yeah. Now you just play the bomb. One enemy remaining. Wall ended up getting a little bit scuffed. That's okay. You cleared stuff. Oh no. 2v1. Yeah. The Reyna should not be doing this play. Not at all. So, see? This is what I mean. So, Reyna had a good game. Well, quote-unquote good game, according to the scoreboard. But this is not the best play to make, right? Because you're giving them... You're giving this Jet opportunities to win this round. This is a 2v1. You guys should be playing, um, playing around the My bomb way. here. Jet just used her knives. See how she plays this. Did she go all the way up through garage to peek through B and then come up mid window? Going B, going B, going B. Yeah, looks like it. So you're still playing the bomb, which is the right play. Reyna is kind of griefing right now. It's a good molly. You mollied off the bomb. I would have. 30 seconds left. Last player standing. Good round. Good job. Defenders win. Yeah, the only thing I would say here. Is I would play around with your team. I would play with your team a little bit more. Like just if he's in the corner there, I would play like more around this area. Or or like here, up here, up anywhere over here, just to kind of help him out so you can trade this kill a little bit better. Because as soon as he dies, you would be in a spot where you can just easily just peek out right there and then um trade the skill i was just trying to like let my ping settle down a bit you know oh were you lagging oh yeah that would be another thing too that could help definitely with performances making sure that you get like a wired connection with internet but yeah oh that's probably why you're shaking your mouse there too right okay so yeah Overall, this would be my biggest takeaway. Um, let's see. So buy usability is more. Um, flashes, especially. Your your wall, you know, you can get away with not buying your wall some rounds, um, especially if you don't have enough. But flashes are very, very important. Sometimes I would argue more than like a heavy shield. I would get light shields and double flashes sometimes, depending um, on what you guys wanted to do. Um, and before peeking aggressively. So certain angles, if you, if you're taking like a very, like, let's say you're playing a, right. And you know, you're behind the site and you hear them long. That's when you throw it. Like when you think that they're going to be somewhere, you definitely use your flashes. Um, stick to your teammates more. Um, when you have numbers,
like we just mentioned that last round, like just a little bit closer to him. Uh, I know you were lagging, but I'm just saying like for future um, examples, like if you have numbers, play with your team so you can trade those kills. That You had that one the first round in OT. That was a really good trade in, in Garage. That's, that's the kind of stuff that you would want to do. Um, limit the angles that you get peaked from. Uh, this is going back to what I was mentioning. Like you want to stay away from two different angles peaking you at once. Um, I mean, sometimes it's inevitable. Like some angles you're going to be peaking two at a time, but there could be a time where you're like, okay, I know for sure no one's coming from this angle. So then you can do that kind of play. Then it's okay. Um, or it's statistically in your favor. And then uh, on eco rounds, after losing pistol, especially try not to buy light shields or a ghost or anything. Just try and save as much as you can. So then, um, and this goes in like save rounds in general, just make sure you're more aware of how much money you have going into the next round. Like, do you have enough to buy full armor? Um, you know, Vandal, Phantom, and, um, uh, and utility, um, buy Phantom, Vandal, and util on gun rounds, on buy rounds. That's another thing. Um, I noticed there's a lot of rounds where you get specters and stuff, which is okay if you have to force up, but if you can, you want to um use the phantom vandal and if you're not too comfortable with them i would make sure you know you these two guns you just you definitely get very very comfortable with them because they're a lot better um so yeah this was the biggest takeaways i've i noticed and i'll send this to you over in discord too so you have it but uh yeah did you do you have any other any last questions or anything like that uh you you know you said you were recording this right where could i find that recording maybe um, so I'm going to end up uploading this on to, um, drifts YouTube. Um, I'll, right. I'll give them the, uh, the VOD and stuff. And then, so you can always go back and rewatch it too, if you'd like. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Uh, thank you for the coaching. Bye. Yeah, no problem. Have a good one, man. Take it easy.